Okay, if you're all ready, I'd like to go ahead and introduce the next set of speakers. This is the National Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition with Dr. Gregory White and Mr. Kevin Archer. Hey, my job's done. That was just... Uh, good afternoon or evening or whatever it is at this point. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to be here this afternoon. As mentioned, I'm Greg White, uh, it's Kevin Archer. We're going to be going ahead and talking to you a little bit about uh, the National Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to divide it up. Uh, basically, I'm going to do the pointy hair manager, high level overview, what was the competition all about, uh, what format uh, somewhat. Uh, and Kevin's going to get to talk about how it was implemented, how it was conducted, a little bit more about the technology behind it and uh, uh, how we put the thing together. Uh, so we'll go ahead and... Objectives, okay. This was, if you'd notice the title, it said National Collegiate Cyber Defense Company. This is a collegiate event. Uh, this was conducted um, to bring together a bunch of different teams from colleges and universities to compete in a competition, a, a, commuter, a computer security cyber defense competition. Uh, as such, you know, we had to have, okay, we're an academic institution, we have to have the objectives for the competition and so on and so forth. So you can see some of the objectives here, uh, meaningful mechanism for institutions of higher education to come together. Uh, part of the problem here that we look at is a lot of times, and if anybody out there has taken courses or teaching courses, students don't have a lot of opportunity uh, outside of a normal lab environment to really play with some of the things. You don't have uh, the uh, a, it's kind of hard to simulate that attacking red team or the, the hostile internet, which is what students are going to be faced with uh, once they graduate. It's hard to simulate that in a lab, a pristine lab environment. And at the same time, uh, the colleges and universities normally are very um, hesitant to open their labs up and open, or allow their students to do a lot of activities that they might consider too close to the hacking environment. Please excuse the term there. So they, you know, they shy away from anything that might carry that label with it. So what we really wanted to do is to provide an opportunity for teams to come together and try some of the things that they have learned. You haven't given an opportunity to. You've had all these lessons. You've talked about securing systems. Uh, you've talked about the technologies, the processes, the procedures, and so on and so forth. Here's an environment where you can go ahead and come together and try to do that somewhat. Uh, there are, I, I do want to draw attention. Here's, you see this, some of the other objectives. I do want to really draw attention to that last one down there. This was a competition. Uh, and from this competition, we were going to crown a national champion. And because of that, that actually inf uh, influenced some of the actions, some of the activities, the format of how we did things. Uh, some of the other, there are, we were not the first by any stretch of the imagination. As, as we all know, for heaven's sakes, DEF CON's been doing the capture the flag kind of competition. We're not the first or the only cyber competition in the country. We knew that. Uh, but because of this national champion aspect to it, uh, it drove certain decisions that were made, and you'll see that as, as we go along here. The history of the CDC, how the heck did that silly thing start? As I mentioned, we, did, we are not. We, we don't profess to be the first uh, college that's uh, conducting these competitions. We don't expect uh, profess to be the first organization uh, that's conducting such a competition or anything similar to that. We mentioned, you know, for example, here at DEF CON, the, the capture the flag in all its many different formats has been going on for a long time here. And at a number of different universities across the country, there have been competitions. Different universities have conducted different types of competitions. Uh, most of these, you'll, and some of them are, are uh, attack, defend kind uh, types where you have, you know, the, the, the teams have to protect their own system and to attack the other team's system. Some of them are defensive only, some of them are capture the flag. There are a lot of different formats. So we weren't the only ones. Now, back in 19, or excuse me, 2004, uh, there was a group of indivi or two individuals specifically, one from George Washington University, uh, Lance Hoffman, uh, and another individual, Dan Ragsdale, Colonel Dan Ragsdale from the uh, uh, West Point, the military academy, who actually actually obtained a Nas uh, National Science Foundation, an NSF grant, to bring together academics from across the country and to talk about the possibility of putting together a national competition for colleges. That was the whole point of this workshop. And I, I was fortunate to be to invited to be was one of the individuals that was uh, invited to attend that competition, or excuse me, that workshop. Uh, and we had a lot of people from all over, a lot of people who've been conducting these types of things. Well, you get all these academics together, everybody, we talked about it for a couple days, uh, and everybody agreed, this is a good idea. We ought to have some sort of 
national competition. We ought to have some sort of mechanism to, uh, you know, regional or whatever districts to bring the winners from those up to a national level, so on and so forth. But the problem is, and anybody who's ever dealt with academia, uh, whether you're a student or a professor or whatever, you know, as soon as you get a bunch of academics together, the first thing they want to do is form a committee. And, and once you form a committee, nothing ever happens. And, and basically that, to be quite honest, that's exactly what happened at this workshop. Everybody was not in their head in agreement. All the professors were not in their head and saying, yes, this is something great. We ought to do it. We ought to push on. Let's form a committee and let's get this going. So they formed a committee and nothing happened. Um, there was a group of us, actually three individuals representing three different schools in the state of Texas uh, that were participating in that. And, and you know, we'd all dealt with academia before and we kind of like had a little sidebar discussion and said, Let's just do it. You know, we're not going to wait for the committee to decide anything. We're just going to go ahead and hold a competition. We'll hold one here in Texas, and that's what we did. Uh, we held a uh, the first regional, in essence, competition in 2005, and uh, uh, we had different universities. You know, Texas A&M, uh, UT uh, Austin, and UT San Antonio were the three schools represented the workshop that came together. Uh, we had Del Mar Community College that also participated. University of North Texas. We had a number of schools in in Texas, in other words, that participated in that first event in 2005. Uh, after that, it was successful. Everybody liked it. We played around with the format a little bit. We came up with a format that we liked somewhat. And I need to emphasize something here once again. If you notice the name of that, this competition, National Collegiate Cyber Defense, big stomp, underline that, highlight it, put it in bold. It's a defensive competition. Teams and individuals will be disqualified uh, for conducting any sort of uh, offensive or hostile activity against any of the other teams. There's a reason for that. The reason is what we're trying to uh, get the buy-in from organizations from industry, for example. And as soon as if we made this a attack defend type exercise, all the industry types would shy away from that. Don't want to sponsor it. Uh, when you make it defensive only, you get a lot more people interested. We're not, in other words, and we had this we actually have had to had this kind of question in the early days, you know, are you training the next generation of hackers? No, 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 no. We're training the next generation of cyber defenders. You know, it's cyber defense competition. So, and everybody buys that. The media buys that. Everybody loves it. We're all happy. We press on. Um, after that 2000 event, or uh, five event, it, it was very successful. Uh, everybody uh, liked what, we're, what we were doing, the format. We had a lot of good feedback from the participants, the instructors. We had actually, we had uh, professors that told me they went back and changed their programs at their universities as a result of what they saw at the competition. They realized that there were holes that they saw. Uh, things that they were not teaching or teaching they, they could be doing differently to prepare their students, to motivate their students, to get them excited about this subject a little bit more. And they actually went back and started changing their programs as a result of the competition. So in, in uh, 2005, we basically announced, okay, we're going to go ahead and hold a national. You know, once again, we're not waiting on the committee. By the way, the committee that was formed has never met. So, you know, if we'd been waiting on it, it they'd, we'd still be waiting on that committee. So. We just went ahead and said, we're going to go ahead and we're conducting a national this next year. And we raised our hand and said, we'll do it. Uh, anybody's interested in participating, let us know. And what we were able to do is we were able to get four other universities to sponsor regional competitions in their area. And we also got, and for anybody who knows the annual cyber defense exercise that the military academies have uh, been conducted, that's, that's another example of one of those other competitions that's been going on for a while. Uh, the military academies for, I guess, the last six years have been holding an annual competition between the, acad between the service academies alone. So you don't let anybody else participate. It's just the military that does that. But we actually got them to sign on board as one of our regionals. So the idea is, and very logically here, we had the regional competitions, the winners from each one of the regional competitions then came to the nationals, including a, a team from West Point. You see where the regional uh, competitions were held this last year. And so uh, just here's a, you, know, we'll, you don't have to memorize this, there's no exam afterwards. But here's a list of some of the different universities that participated. If you will notice, take a look at that very first one. This competition is not limited to four-year institutions. It is also not limited to undergraduates. Basically, the only requirement is that the participants must be full-time students at their respective inst uh, institution, uh, college or university. Um, so we're trying to make this as broad as possible to make it uh, as open as possible so we can get as many people participating in it uh, as possible. Um, 
The 2006 event, which was held earlier this spring, very similar in format to the one in 2005. Now, let me just sort of explain, and Kevin is going to go into this in much greater detail in a second here. But the format of it, the premise is that it's, it's kind of like congratulations. You know, I'm, I'm talking to a team here. You know, congratulations, you and your, your buddies here, the team has just been hired by some company to be the security team for our corporation. It's like you basically you just graduated, you just got hired, welcome into our company, and we present you on day one, you walk into that competition on day one, and here is your network. It's fully functional, it's up and running, it's got a web server, e-commerce site, it's got a you know, mail, it's got all the different little things that you'd expect that you see at a, a, at a, a company if you walked in. We guarantee it's working, we don't guarantee it's secure. As a matter of fact, you can probably pretty much guarantee there's going to be problems in it. And so it's your job, you, the team, it's your job to secure the network and oh, by the way, you got to keep it operational. Because as soon as they walk into the room, we start the scoring engine. And we know that there's certain services that are supposed to be up and running and we're going to check. And oh, by the way, at a certain point in the time, or in the future here, um, we're going to unleash a red team on it, you know, to represent that hostile internet, that environment that exists out there. Uh, we're not going to tell you exactly when they're going to come. We're not going to tell you how they're going to come or what they're going to do. But um, they're going to start attacking here in the near future. So that's the basic premise. Now, throughout the rest, it's a two and a half day competition. We start Friday afternoon, um, go to late at evening. It's not 24 by 3 because basically we want to go home at night and also we do things like reviewing logs to make sure that you know we're checked to see what people are doing and remember we talked about no hostile activity by team members against others so we check those kind of things we have the opportunity in the evenings to go through stuff and, and, and make adjustments um, but during that time period, another thing that you will also get is you'll see business injects. The kind of things that, okay, right, you have business, got to keep the, 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 the network up and operational, it's got to be running, we got to have the, the e-commerce server's got to be up, the mail has got to be going, and you've got to maintain that, and oh, by the way, you have these people who are trying to break in, I got to keep them out, and oh, by the way, I've also got upper management who's levying these requirements on me. You know, what kind of requirements? Okay, well, here's a list of our new employees, and here's the folks that have been fired. Uh, you've got uh, 30 minutes here to uh, uh, get the new uh, accounts established, new user IDs, passwords, accounts set up for these individuals, and these people better be out, but you better back up the date. You know, you get the idea, those kind of things. They may also, like uh, one competition one day, we, uh, the beginning of the second day, they walked in, and there was a new piece of hardware that was sitting there waiting for them. It's kind of like, congratulations, your predecessor had ordered this, and it just arrived. Uh, you've got two hours hours to get this piece of hardware up and running. So they have those kind of things that they have to face. And oh, by the way, maintain the operational network, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So you get the idea. Get the idea about the format uh, for the competition. You get points for services that are up and running. You lose points when you get broken into. And, and just a, a comment, and Kevin, I'm sure, is going to go into this in more detail, talking about the red team. But the red team, uh, that hostile attacking internet force there is actually, we have a group of volunteers. Uh, uh, mostly coming from commercial environments. For example, we're in you know, San Antonio, for those who may not know anything about San Antonio, uh, we've, we've got a lot of security companies down there. And so we have a lot of volunteers that come in and help us perform that job. So that's our, that's our red team. Uh, oh, a little comment down there we have to thank. Uh, the CCDC has been sponsored in part by the Department of Homeland Security. Um, they actually have signed on, and it looks like uh, they are going to, we're going to become a line item in their budget here, one of their little budgets. I mean, DHS budget is huge and we're just a very small piece, but it does look like they're going to be uh, signing on. They liked what they saw uh, and they're going to continue to sponsor us in the future. We had a number of other companies. Here's just some idea of us, some of the other folks. Uh, who have sponsored. Some people sponsored, and, and for example, you see some security folks in there who gave us equipment or software or whatever, and you can pretty much guess that if you see a sponsor's name and something like that, then you're going you're gonna to see some of their equipment in the competition at some point because it, it's nice to get that. And it's nice for the students because a lot of times the universities may not have access, may not, especially some of the smaller ones, the community colleges, may not have the budget to go out and get the latest and greatest uh, piece of hardware or software that's offered out there, and if they've never seen it before, they're going to get to see it during the competition. Um, anyway, so you see some of those things. Uh, Think Geek, love those folks. Caffeinated soap, that's what they provided. You know, which, which is important. Uh, oh, here's just, uh, Kevin will talk a little bit more, like I said, about the, uh, the specifics in terms of the network there. You can see sort of a little diagram he'll talk about. Uh, we do have a traveling trophy that was created. There's a picture of our wonderful little trophy, the idea being here that we've got a lot of little places to stick names on it, and that will be a traveling one that goes to the different universities. Very similar to what the, uh, the, the, 
Service Academy has with their trophy. Uh, each of the universities also get a, a trophy that the, the winning university received a trophy that they get to keep and that participants did. By the way, I think I forgot to mention that teams consist of eight members, up to 18 members. So per team, the uh, winning team from this first year, you see a picture of them. In fact, we have some of those folks here at, the, at uh, uh, DEF CON I saw this year. The first place team was University of North Carolina at Charlotte, won it this year. So congratulations to those folks. Uh, if you see them, ask them about it. I don't know if there's anybody here from UNC. See, anybody, do they show up? Okay, ask those folks what they thought about the competition. If anybody wants to get a, a different opinion besides our opinion on it, if you want to get a, a participant's opinion on what they thought about it. Uh, oh, one of the other things I probably ought to mention too in terms of the regionals and the nationals, um, we don't dictate to the regional competitions exactly how they need to run their competitions. Uh, we know how we th are going to run the national. We have some ideas about it, but we're allowing the regionals for, uh, for this year and next year to have a little bit more freedom in how they format because we figure there's other people out there with bright ideas and somebody may up, come up with some great ideas that we can all come together and, and to benefit from and maybe to adapt uh, what we're doing or so the other regionals can adapt what they're doing as we all learn you know, these good war stories and, and good methods to conduct these competitions. Um, future of the CCDC, just for information purposes. Uh, big one there for, as far as we're concerned because all my people that work for me at the University of Texas San Antonio are all grant funded positions. So basically we got to have money coming in or they don't get paid. Uh, and they like doing this. Kevin's Basically Kevin's just doing this full time now, is working on the national for this next year. But we want to increase it. Last year you saw we had four plus the service academy. So in, in essence we had five regionals. Uh, we're shooting to have eight to ten. Looks like uh, I think from folks that I've heard we haven't locked that down yet. Uh, Kevin will be talking a little bit more about it. But we should be able to get to that eight easily. Uh, and then potentially, you know, hopefully cross our fingers, maybe even get to 10 this year. Um, we're not sure exactly how big the competition is going to be, how many regions we ultimately will have down the road. Because if you think about that format we talked about, when those folks, when you walk in with your team on that day one, we have, for example, this year we had five exact copies of this network with multiple systems. They all have exactly the same hardware. They're all running the same software. I mean, you go from one system to one room to the next room and it's exact, you know, take a picture, it looks the same. Uh, if this is going to be, if we're champ, you know, going to be crowning a national champion, uh, you can't have any differences between the teams. You know, you can't have one team saying, oh, well, we would have won too if we'd had that set up there. That, that's not going to work. You have to have exactly the same setup. And that's going to drive certain things. Uh, it's going to drive, one of the things it's going to drive is how big this can get because how many people, how many of those networks can we have? How many, you know, how many different universities in the country have that many computer systems? Because you'll have 8, 10, 12, depending on what we're, how we're going to set things up. Uh, computers, you have all the different uh, network devices that go with it, the security devices. There's a lot of equipment, a lot of things to play around with here. Um, so we are going to increase, but we think it probably will max out at 10 to 12 at the most, which means that instantly if, if you know, you can do the math there real quick. If we're maxed out at 10 and each of the regionals can only do 10, that means there's only 100 universities and colleges that can compete? No, no, absolutely. You know, we can't limit it to that. So there's undoubtedly at some point in the future going to be a structure beneath the regional level. In fact, we have one of the regionals that's already exploring that, looking at, for example, district competitions and then going to the regional, then going to a national. So you can see where this is eventually down the road may build into something, you know, big. Uh, the competition, uh, University of Texas San Antonio, the Center for Infrastructure Assurance and Security, which is who we are, uh, where we come from. We are going to conduct a competition again in 2007. We're going to conduct it again in 2008. Um, not sure about the location yet, possibly San Antonio, possibly again, or maybe someplace else. We may explore looking at uh, doing it someplace else. Uh, but one of the goals for this coming year is we're going to be establishing a governing body. Right now, we basically say we're setting the rules. We're dictating how this is going to run. We're putting it on. We're going to dictate. We're going to tell you how we're going to run it. Um, we're doing that just like I said, back up to that. Remember that earlier conversation? Get a bunch of academics together and nothing's ever going to happen because they're going to form a committee unless someone does something. Well, we're doing that something. But we recognize to get the buy-in, we really need to have some sort of governing body. You know, think NCAA-ish kind of th uh, structure here. You know, there's a, there's a governing body for NCAA. We're going to need some sort of governing body for this competition. And that governing body is going to be set up uh, this year to where we're going to announce those individuals who will be on that, that board basically at the 2007 competition. And their job then from 2007 to 2008 will be to develop the rules. 
you know, come up with the rules for the nationals and the regionals and this, this uh, even competition here, and then those will be announced at two th in 2008. Um, was there a question, sorry? Or is it, I heard something else, okay. Anyway, at this point I'm gonna turn it over to Kevin, who's going to talk about a little bit more about the how things were put together and how things ran. Sorry. Hopefully you guys can see me. I, they don't have any stools. So. Um, my name is Kevin Archer. One of the reasons I joined the CIS is exactly what Greg was talking about with the academics is I'm not an academic, not part of the ten-year mafia, so they brought us in to actually get the stuff done. But um, as he mentioned, the concept came from the NSF planning deal. Uh, the uh, they just could never get it off the ground. So we decided, well, you know, we've been going to DEF CON since forever, and we've seen some of these competitions, and this is how we can make it more um, corporate friendly. But, uh, and it's similar to CDX exercises, if anybody's ever been involved in those. Um, and again, uh, the big thing is the defensive only. Um, I've tried to convince individuals that we should let them go at each other at the end, but unfortunately our sponsors are like, no. Uh, and so it's more of a, it's not a capture a flag per se. The red team, red team does all the uh, security type stuff. So the overview of the event itself, basically, like Greg mentioned, they come in. Here's your network, um, and and you have t eventually 24 gaming hours to secure it. One of the uh, huge challenges is uh, often, as we've seen and many of us do day to day, um, is uh, dealing with management, dealing with you know, live internet activity, trying to keep your services up, your customers happy, and in the meanwhile, defending it from uh, certain individuals. So um, that's what we really try to mimic. And it, it, and we, we do the best we can. We, we have traffic generators on, on the network that actually throw a ton of stuff at, at these guys. So it basically, real, real life traffic at that point, it's really hard to identify where the red teamers are coming from. Um, and, and makes it more makes their job more difficult, just like it is for ours in the everyday world. So the concept again: identical business networks, uh, business tasks are given. So you, you know you have the big boss saying, "Hey, by the way, I thought you know I was talking to my buddy at the golf course, and this this tool is really cool. I want you to implement it, and I want to see it by tomorrow because he's my best friend, and I told him I'd buy it." Um, everything on down the line, you know, user changes, password changes. Um, Everything that you're going to have to deal with day-to-day -day admin stuff while still trying to change uh, security. And the reason we kind of go to that point, everyone's like, well, it's a security competition. Well, more and more budgets are cut, and admins these days are your security force. So we make them do both to kind of say, hey, look, even if you end up on the admin side, never forget about security because you might not necessarily have the $10,000 or the $100,000 budget to hire, you know, your $80,000 security guy or a team for that matter. So um, again, the independent red team is a bunch of consultants. I'll go a little bit more into that in a little bit. And the neutral white team, which, um, you know, th those guys are like auditors, ISSA type people, um, ASACA if you're familiar with those organizations, basically volunteers come in and more and more vendors are sending people that mostly want to be on the red team, but with the overflow, we stick them on the white team. So, uh, um, and again, the teams are scored based on their ability to defend their networks against attacks and keep your business up and running. So the challenges of doing the network, like you said, is all the equipment must be identical. Regionals, Oftentimes, because like we said, we don't try to dictate what to do, and in order to save expenses, you know, go ahead and do virtual machines. There's a really strong reason we don't do virtual machines because it's not too often you walk into the financial organizations of our world and they're running a bunch of VNC servers. No, it's going to be all independent platforms. So we try to mimic corporate as much as we can with with our small budget. Um, images, exact images, are created of each platform. We use a product called uh, Acronis. Uh, true image to do that because they tend to do a lot better job than Ghost with a, and I shouldn't say that since Semantics thinking about it, but um, uh, Ghost just doesn't like things like Solaris and BSD at this point, not too reliable. So we have to make sure they're identical, um, identical all the way down to the processor, RAM, platform, look, feel, everything. So we have no contestants that are, you know, get kind of whiny on us. Um, uh, and then one of the interesting things is once they get owned, and then get RM'd, because <laughs> we do let them RM, RF, the red team. If you get in, you can do pretty much anything. 
an attacker would. We don't try to hold them back too much. Uh, if a team's been RM, RF like 12 times, we might, you know, go, oh, okay, give them a break. But um, uh, we have a restore service, so we'll run in true image them almost, and it works like a business. It costs them points instead of money in this case. So, um, you know, if you get RM, RF, we'll get you, you're going to lose points for that. We'll get you back up, but you're going to have to spend some points to get back up. Um, all the traffic is logged and monitored. This is done for multiple reasons. One, Greg mentioned, was to make sure there's fairness and equability there. If, uh, you know, one team's pounding on another team, which we actually had happen the first year, uh, that's, that's not too fair to them. So everything we see goes across our IDSs, and I'll go more in a little bit on the network in a minute. And mostly it just keeps them honest. It also lets us know how our network's performing and what we need to upgrade change as far as our core infrastructure. So basic layout of each team's room is um, the operating systems we choose are always changing. Uh, we will give the students a list of, oh, has flavors they might encounter, but we never give them an exact spec. They don't know what they're going to get um, when they walk in the door. And one of the reasons we do that is, you know, MIT is going to have a lot more money than some of these community colleges. So we don't want to say, oh, you know, you're going to be running this version of Solaris. And MIT's like, oh, we don't have that. Let's go buy it. And the other guys are like, well, Let's go buy a book, I guess. Um, Linux, BSD, Windows, and we try to mix it up enough that, and throw in at least one weird OS, like, oh, you know, that some weird admin had on his systems. Um, and again, it's more of a, we say it, you're welcome to the company, you're the new security team and everything else. Um, a lot of that's based on some of our past experiences in industry. We we're consultants back through the dot bombs and walking in and, the, you know, with all the corporate buyouts that were happening, taking over a system and, on the guy on the way out the door is root kidding, so and, and going from there on. Often the, we'll leave them unpatched. We'll we'll specifically find older versions and we'll throw tricks in there like uh, the old you know security through obscurity, uh, change the banner so they think they're running. And this is kind of interesting story. We had a one team who's begging us for um, for this. We provided them their core OS CDs too, so they can restore themselves. But we had one team begging us for, um, uh, I guess it was Fedora Core 2 at the time, and they're like, no, we need two, we need two, we have to upgrade. Well, just for fun, that was actually a Fedora Core 4 system that we had just changed some banners on. So we mess with them quite a bit. You have to have, you have, to have quite a, they, they just have to sit down and, and really think, you know, what am I dealing with? You know, do a uname dash A, well, oh, okay, that kernel, is not four years old. So um, it, it, that was kind of fun. Um, and a lot of the systems have been previously compromised. From We'll do it usually from an admin perspective. Um, and that's kind of the fun part that I get to deal with a lot is throw on root kits, leave them out there for the red team, PHP backdoor shells on the e-com servers, you know, make sure all the credit cards are unencrypted in the databases, all that kind of stuff, and hope the red team finds it. And often I'm disappointed, but I'll go in that one some more. Um, uh, the network itself is very minimally configured. Basically, here's your switch. It's a firewall, which we purposely stick in bridging mode so it's not acting as a firewall. You have two hours before the red team starts. Better get your access list up, your rule state, and, and go. But um, that's it. So they start really with nothing. Uh, the services, as you mentioned, they have to have core services up. Uh, we have an automated scoring engine that goes out and does this. But, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're a business. You, you have to have mail, you have to have pop, you have to have e-com, you have to have DNS, you have to have HTTP, and you have to have HTTPS for e your uh, e-com site up all the time. Throughout the event, the business index might add more, like, oh, you know, your clients are begging you for an FTP site or SSH access for these consultants or whatever, bring it up line, do it securely, and then we have uh, people that judge that. Um, there's other services that are required but unmonitored, such as SQL, especially for the e-com site or Oracle, or whatever our back-end database is at that time. Um, the we also put applications on there. Um, on, the, on some of the client systems, we'll put malware, file sharing, unauthorized security tools, MP3s, whatever. One of the injects might be, hey, you know, I saw this. The, the CEO might send them an inject. Hey, I read this article on the RAA. They're coming down hard on MP3s. Find them and write me a report, um, stuff like that. And uh, some tools are uh, installed to help, but they're, they're put there to be a hindrance at the same time. Last year we had Big Brother on there, and we had it completely unsecure, just default install. So uh, the red team had a lot of fun with that because they thought that, you know, the teams are like, hey, this is great, we can see our whole network. Yeah, well, so can they. 
unfirewalled out in front. So that was kind of fun. Um, OS Commerce, I don't know if anybody's familiar with that. We deliberately put a very old version on there. This is the kind of stuff we do to just kind of see where the students are at and get a good, good idea of, you know, and really challenge them. We put a really old version of OS Commerce on there, which is great because the patches are available. The bad thing is it doesn't work with that version S, uh, MySQL in this case. So you have to upgrade that too. And by the way, it dumps all the tables during the upgrade. So I hope you made a backup. Lots of fun. This is kind of an idea of what a typical team network would look like. Again, you know, we don't have the resources to throw out 2,000 client systems they have to manage and, you know, 1,500 servers or whatever. So um, this is basically what last year's looked like. Um, there's a, you know, you got the firewall, the switch. Um, you'll have a PDC, DNS servers, um, uh, the client workstations, which are really owned, um, and uh, uh, at least one system we give to them that's kind of you know okay, which is usually a, a laptop of some sorts, and uh, then uh, the core services. So you can see we had like MySQL BSD 6.1, which at the time was beta, so that was kind of fun. Um, so there'll be really new stuff on there where there's challenges too. So uh, you know try to find drivers for for newer systems on a beta BSD box, have fun. And uh, that, that's, that's one other aspect of the challenges of dealing with newer technology and older technology and integrating them. Now, behind the scenes, our network operations is basically various OSs, but mostly we run Linux. Um, we have redundant firewalls, which is IDS um, monitoring and, and scoring engines that's all protected through mostly ACLs, intrusion detection systems, multi-leveled firewalls, so that they can't pound on us. And if they do, they uh, are obviously disqualified. Um, originally, uh, our scoring engine, which just goes out and checks for those services, was just a tweaked out Nansel script, and it, it it worked. But you know, no offense to my buddy Dwayne, it kind of sucked. So last year, we had a, a new guy, Leon Johnson, come on board. He wrote the whole he wrote rewrote the whole thing in C, much faster, more reliable. Um, since the red teams are allowed to change content, and you know, it's not just enough to say, okay, my HTTP, C, HTTP C site is up. Well, you know, is it really you? Is it, a, is it really the site or is it a picture of, you know, the mullet crew, which one of the red teams defaced with? Um, so he went through, integrated some MD5 hashing on various uh, spots in the page, which, you know, don't, aren't necessarily code. We hit all sorts of stuff, so we could go through and reliably say, that's the site, it's functional. Or in the e-com site, that's, you know, that's the product, it's supposed to be there, and we could go really deep. There's just some pictures of the event again. Um, uh, that's the operations room there on the, on the right-hand side. It's a, uh, basically, we run everything on that mobile switch. I wish we could do that with everything, but, you know, again, we're sponsored, so we, we have to make do. We hump about 400 systems over there over to the hotel and set them all up and hopefully next year we'll see a lot more of these racks but there's a in the bottom left hand corner there there's a team room um i'm not sure who that is i think it's actually you but <laughs> uh, i think that's a utsa team but um and then we have just a shot of uh, one of the students pulling their hair out the red team volunteers this is kind of interesting um I'm, I'm from penetration testing background myself and so is most of our our organization but um you know we try to give them general guidance it's all industry volunteers your typical you know big five guys come in do their thing it's not even big five anymore it's probably like big two but um uh, we give them general guidance you know it, there has to be a certain amount of, uh, of fairness and equitability so if you compromise one system immediately go to all the other teams and try to pop them with the same exact thing. It's the only way to keep it fair. And we have a guy in there that says, okay, that's great, you know, you got rude or whatever, go do it here, here, and here, and here, and, and then uh, we'll go from there. Um, it's a, for, the, for, their, for their purposes, it's a playground. I mean, you can do anything, no restrictions. Basically, at this point, you are a black hat, have fun, do whatever you want. Um, so it's a great place to try old and new exploits. Most, and like I said, most of the time anything goes, sometimes we'll hold them back a little bit if you know, people are crying, which has happened. And um, so, but RMRF, web device, web deface, send own messages to printers, you know, print on their printers if you can, and whatever. We had one guy uh, just sitting there moving the printer all day and the team was constantly yelling at each other, how can I print? That was pretty good. But, um, and some of the challenges though are, and this is, 
kind of where we're, we're always looking for help. So if you're interested in red teaming or whatever, you know, you can send me an email. My information's at the end. Um, getting quality people. You would think with all these big uh, organizations that uh, these guys would come in, do your typical assessment procedure, scan everything, you know, all ports, and uh, not just go after low-hanging low fruit. And, and they really got stuck in a wormhole, and this has happened both years. So this year we're going to try to invite some of uh, some of the uh, people we know personally from different states to come down and uh, kind of take care of the back end. Because like I said, we put all sorts of stuff in there. We had PHP backdoor shells. We had all sorts of stuff that was never found, never patched by the, by the students either because I guess they never ran Nikto or whatever. But for some reason, either the professionals, which is somewhat disturbing. Um, so, you know, they'd find DCOM and have a great time on all the networks. So a DCOM, and well, okay, you found DCOM, why don't you even try WMF, which is new, if, you know, if it's vulnerable to one, go forward. And there wasn't a lot of root, which was really, dis really kind of disturbing. So we'd like to see more and more uh, balancing of those teams. The business index, like I said, it's basically just your typical CEO, CTO, hey, how are you doing, you know? My buddy has this, install it, this and that. Um, uh, the, a lot of times it's just out of service. For them, uh, you know, we need a vulnerability assessment. Give me a complete report. Um, you can use, and we'll provide them with commercial and freeware tools. Um, a lot of the vendors have asked for feedback on their commercial tools or freeware, so they're getting, you know, people that haven't touched their tools before. Most of these students have never played with, you know, a Retina or an ISS or anything like that. So they go, well, how was it? you know, in compared to uh, a Nessus or something like that. Um, we make them do mass password changes. Incident response, if they get owned, they can actually get a few points back by just uh, responding to the incident. This is the attack, this is what we got popped with, and uh, this is where it came from. If you can write up a simple inc incident response report, you might get some points back for that. And uh, then we also make them write security policies for their users, implement system security and that kind of stuff. The white team are a bunch of volunteers. We have one in each room. Um, like I said, his ISAC guys, his A type people that make sure that A, they're not going out to preloaded sites. That's one of the rules. Because, like, you know, we don't want the MITs to go out to their own FTP site and say, okay, well, this is publicly available and they're downloading, you know, their own personal copy of Retina when no one else has it. So um, they will keep an eye out for stuff like that. Um, and uh, they're responsible for scoring those business injects because obviously we can't be in all the rooms at one time. And the vendor sponsor role. Vendors really play a lot of roles in our thing. It's not just about the money or whatever. Um, a lot of them are just there to donate equipment and software. That's really what we need. We want these uh, students to have zero day stuff. Last year we had the beta uh, tipping point X505 before it even hit, hit the market, which was really cool. So. Tipping Point got to see what users were going to be calling them about beforehand. They actually had set up a, a, a vendor a tech support, warned them. We gave the teams a tech support number, said, here's a box, see what you can do with it. And their tech support were pulling their hair out. But Tipping Point got a really good idea what they needed to fix before they rolled it from a user perspective and uh, it, you know what people did and did not like about it. And it, 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 that worked out really good. Um, so we get that type of stuff. ISS donated scanners. Of course, we have all the freeware available and, and open source because we're big open source uh, promoters. But um, uh, that's what vendors really get a play out of. Now, Cisco, on the other hand, who's donated basically our core infrastructure, they're just, you know, hey, this is neat. Here you go. You guys can have it. And, and that's worked out really well, too. Uh, Certain limitations when it comes to the vendors, a lot of them are like, well, you know, you're running this enterprise, this and that, we want you to roll out enterprise level apps. Well, I'm not gonna ask a bunch of, you know, students to roll out Tivoli in a 24 hour period while they're trying to deal with all this other stuff. So we kind of have to limit on what what we do uh, accept. But um, of course cash, we always take cash, but it, it's expensive to pull it off. I think the first year it cost us a quarter of a million dollars and that was out of pocket and we're grant funded so that's six months less salary or whatever for half of us but um so that's one way these vendors are playing a role and then they we also ask them you know these students haven't been to the rsas or or even black hats of, of the of their time yet so you know whatever you have left over from rsa send us and we'll give out you know doodads and other you know ninja type stuff that uh, they walk away with like this hand handbag just full of goodies from the security world. Um, 
And uh, their ROI for the vendors is really simple. They get a lot of good press out of it. They get their product reviews, which a lot of companies pay a ton of money to organizations just to you know review their product and tell them what they think from a usability standpoint. So they're like, hey, this is free. This is great. And uh, of course, access to upcoming students that are in the job market. I know we have at least one competitor here who is now employed uh, based on one of the based on the connection through uh, his own regional. So that was kind of cool. Current regional competitions. We have a pretty small footprint right now. Um, there's a couple areas in here. This is an older map that are, are coming. Uh, the Colorado, Nebraska, Omaha, and uh, or Wyoming and New Mexico areas is going to be filled in. And then uh, we've got some interest, a lot of interest from MIT this year. So hopefully that, that right-hand side goes up. But if, if you're in a school and you have a professor who think, hey, we might want to sponsor this or you know hold our own regional for the, your local uh, neighboring states, you know, give us a call and we'll, and we'll give you the basic guidance on how to do it and get your teams there. Um, so they're, they're still coming. I, I know Dr. White had mentioned poss possibly one in Hawaii, which uh, that's the one I'd go to. But. So future, uh, National CCDC 2007, again, it's going to be held in San Antonio. I believe it's going to be at the Hilton Airport. Um, we're currently building a couple of uh, we're going to be launching a few new websites, portal for regional organiz organizers, and then a, a, a really um, thorough site on the event itself. The one that's out there right now is kind of uh, hokey because we're more bu busy building networks for you know identical networks than worrying about HTML. But um, and then uh, working on an NSF grant to reconvene those people and, like he said, start this NCAA type thing, which hopefully will just snowball and, and it'll be a lot of fun. We have a lot of international interest this year um, across the pond. They're starting to they, hey, we want to do one too. We can have an international competition. So you never know. It's already grown um, so much. Started with five teams last year, somewhere in the neighborhood of 70, something like that. And uh, this year it's going to be a heck of a lot more. So um, a lot of those regionals have so much interest from their local universities that I know at least two of them now have state qualifiers before you can, you have to win your state before you can get to the regional. So you can see where it's going. It's going basically um, uh, down the road of NCAA type stuff, which is really cool and really interesting to see. And there's actually a lot of commercial interest. Security guys love it. Uh, like I said, they get their product out and they can basically walk in these rooms as a vendor. If you support us, you're welcome to come. You walk in this room and say, hey man, that kid's really sharp. And hey, you want an internship or whatever, which works out good. And there's also some commercial side of it in the regionals. The regionals don't have a lot of money. You know, we, we don't have a lot of money, but we managed to get this equipment through our vendors. Um, like I said, they use virtual machines. So there's actually uh, White Wolf Securities out there, and they, they have a virtual machine product, which is helping these regionals pull it off, which is, which is really nice to see. And basically, that's all we have. Uh, if, you, if there's any questions for Dr. White and I, um, shoot them or just meet us on the side, unless, Greg, you have something else? I would, yeah. You might want to. Just a couple, a couple things there I recognize that I, I neglected to mention or something like that, uh, and, and you might have caught it from Kevin's discussion there. If you notice his discussion of the red team there, the red team has no advanced foreknowledge, uh, knowledge of what the networks look like, if you probably caught that from his statements there. Uh, basically the purpose of that is that they're supposed to be simulating that hostile internet environment where if someone's banging away on the system or banging away on your network, they don't necessarily know what's going on, so they have to go through the same process that an individual out there in the real world would be would be uh, going through in order to attack your corporate network. So red teams don't get any advantage. Uh, this actually is kind of interesting because it actually provides us with some information. I, I, I actually on my put my research side hat on, my uh, academic hat. We're doing some research in uh, intrusion detection. And it's interesting to take a look at the network traffic that we have um, basically grabbed from this competition to see the kind of things that occur to be able to do things like test intrusion detection systems with some different data that's a little bit more up to date than the DARPA data from, you know, 98 and 99. So there's some other side benefits that may come out of this competition. Uh, Kevin mentioned the international interest. I forgot to mention one of our other key sponsors, ISSA. Their names were up here. But for those folks, hopefully everybody knows who ISSA is, uh, Information System Security Association. That's actually a professional organization, professional information system security types, but it's an international organization. And they are pushing big time for us to try to go or international with this. So by the 2008 competition, you may see schools from, they're, they're pushing 
pushing for uh, something a little bit more local. Like, like you said, there's some across the pond, there's some interest, but there's also some interest up in Canada. So we may have some colleges, universities coming from Canada to participate in it, uh, the competition as well. Uh, one of the other things uh, I mentioned, uh, you know, we're not the only folks that have great ideas. There's a lot of you who have great ideas out there, and we would love to hear from you. Uh, I think I had a bullet up there on one of the slides, and I didn't and mention it uh, or highlight it. But we're hoping to announce in 2007 for the 2008 competition some additional competitions at the national so that there's other things going on, not just this uh, event that we described uh, here, but for example, we we're hoping to have things like maybe a forensics challenge. So uh, you think think of a, like a track meet where there's a team competition, but the team competition may consist of a number of different individual competitions as well that play into that team competition. So we're looking at some other things we might be able to expand into to add uh, other aspects. The, the He mentioned the incident response, but wouldn't it be neat to be able to do some forensics analysis as well? because that's a whole other area in the security arena here that uh, we would love that there's a lot of students studying in that, that arena, a lot of schools that have programs in uh, computer forensics. Let's see if we can't get them involved in that as well. Uh, and so I think those are, those are a couple of little comments I wrote down that, that I had neglected to mention when we were going through, so I wanted to make sure I got that. Now, back to questions. Any questions on things? Are we? Yes, sir. What about physical security breaches? Where's the well, typically uh, test for physical security, but there, there's a funny story. One of the regionals, uh, a couple of them uh, broke in, I guess. I've, I've just heard the story from uh, Ron Dodge, uh, Colonel Ron Dodge. But uh, so it's happened, but it's not part of the competition. <laughs> we don't let the red team in at night. We lock the doors, keep them out. Um, basically, once you have physical access to a machine, it's over. We all know that. So at that point, what happened? From my understanding, they uh, snuck in. There was some of the red team members took it upon themselves to sneak in at night and put things on systems in the regional, and uh, they got to talk to you about it. That's, that's all I know. I wasn't there, so. Okay, so there you go. They didn't touch the system, so we, we got that wrong, but. Like I said, I wasn't there, I don't know, but okay, they, they went in, wrote on some boards, and left them alone. Harassed them. That's always fun. They're in a stressed out area anyway, so, okay. Unfortunately, as a red team, I'm not allowed to. Um, we don't. These guys, these guys keep me out because I know too much, you know. So I, I can't go in. I can't do the hacking and this and that. We really leave it up to the industry professionals. Basically, whatever toolkits they bring, we provide a couple of things. But uh, whatever toolkits they bring, like he said, it's all discoverable. So and those systems are open enough that could you? Oh yeah, I mean it's there. If you wanted, the, the, like I said, the clients are pre-owned, and some of them, you know, have root root access. You can do whatever you want. It. If you're creative, it basically your own creativity is your is your limit as a red team. Oh no, students are originally we let them bring in their own machine. Um, we we limited the number of NICs and stuff like that. So, um, but uh, as the competition grew and we wanted to make sure that you know the community college could compete against the MITs, you know we didn't want someone you know rolling in an AS400 or anything insane. But. Um, uh, no, not not at this time. They're not allowed to uh, download their own software. They can bring in a lot of printed anything they want printed. So if they want to come in and they've created their own for some reason, you know, custom IM solution that they're going to use to communicate or whatever, they can't bring it in electronically. They can bring in the code on paper and recreate it if they're fast diapers. So that's basically bring in the paper, leave the electronics at home kind of thing. Chip. Oh, at the high school level? Um, I'll let Greg address that one. I'm not really sure where that one's going. We actually, this last year, also conducted a local high school competition just to sort of put some feelers out about that. Uh, it went fairly well. It was a little sli a slightly different format. Well, actually, it was quite a bit different format uh, than what we're doing here. At, um, but to be honest, we're backing off a little bit on that. Uh, uh, Iowa State also has been conducting uh, a high school competition. So what we're trying to do is to coordinate with them and allow them to take the lead on that. We'll take the lead on the collegiate. They can take the lead on the high school. So we don't, we're not competing against each other for, you know, 
competitions or something like that. So we're trying to be supportive of them and help them build that as we build the collegiate side. And someone else. Got to Yeah, you want to? Yeah, we recognize it's a huge challenge, especially for universities that might not have access to, you know, uh, technical teams like the CIS is kind of a different organization, different entity. A lot of us have industry backgrounds. So what we do for the regional coordinators or people that want to put one on, or even people that are just interested, is our code's all open source. We, we will release it. Um, we have actually a, a, some guidelines, not rules per se, not you have to follow this format, but you know, here's the challenges we've faced because there's a lot of them, there's a lot of pitfalls, and how to get past them to give people a good idea of you know how, how to how to pull one of these off, a without going broke like we did the first year, and and, and b just you know making it all work. So yeah, uh, yeah. If 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 you have somebody who's interested or or you are, then you know by all means email us and um, soon enough it'll be all available publicly for download anyway. But yeah, we'll go ahead and email that stuff out. The network traffic as well. Yeah, the network traffic, the IDS logs, if you have IDS researchers at your organization or you're an IDS company and you want to run through it, that'll be available too. open source if it's freely available for download. So I mean if it's it, basically if you know of a tool that exists and they don't, they're on loss, right? Um, and that's basically it, uh, is as long as it's publicly accessible and free, like you, you can download freeware, you can download, you can even download shareware, but you can't register it. And mostly we're trying to keep them away from commercial tools. And um, but yeah, if you know of a tool that's out there and, and you just happen to know of it and nobody else does, as long as it's on a public site that they would have been able to get to, the other teams, had they known, um, yeah, that's pretty much where we lay the line. And There's a fine line there and we have to go through a lot of logs to make sure, but um, generally, if we think we would have found it with Google, yeah, it's good. Uh, the internal threat stuff is the stuff we have pre-placed just because it's such a, during the uh, event itself, we've, we've never gone, I think the closest we've done is as a, uh, as a white team, not uh, or the black team in this case, the ops team, um, instead of uh, going in and letting the red team out their systems, we've gone in and pulled like a network card and said you had a failure, stuff like that, and, and they have to deal with that and we're, you know. <laughs> no, the malicious insider stuff is usually there before they take over the network and it's and the threats usually there the entire time because they don't find it but um it's typically your last admin was real disgruntled and and that's what's left over but not like one of your team members has gone astray although that's a cool concept <laughs> And, and yeah, the CEOs are often their own worst insiders. So. After the competition, for like forensics type stuff, or see what they did, we haven't. It's an interesting notion. Usually after the competition, we sleep, <laughs> but uh, we have not done anything with the actual what they've done with their hard drives. Um, generally, since we have white team volunteers in there reporting the whole time, and a lot of it's directed, we've seen it and we've seen the different approaches. Um, We've done no research papers or anything that on that. We'll note it and, and move on. But generally, we're more interested in the traffic at this point. But that's a really interesting point, and I'm sure you'll have Greg talking to me now about mirroring more hard drives. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah, it's a great idea. Any other final ones? Sure. Yeah. All right, any further questions, we'll just step to the side and let the next guys come up. Thank you. Thank you.